Hi friends, welcome back to this brand new video of GTA Global Techniques of Architecture. So, into this video, we would be discussing about clearing all the doubts about the wind load. So, if at all wind load has been asked to any of a designer, the first thing he or she does is starts zoning the building, whether it be vertically. Uh, 80 storied building, uh, 40 storied building, anything like that. So, before the zoning, one needs to understand that what are the types of load in terms of wind load. So, basically, wind load can be divided in just two. So, number one would be positive wind load, number two would be negative wind load. So, there is much more misconception into students' fraternity to understand what is called a wind load and how is it positive and negative. So we, we do it with the help of a video, a sketch, wherein I make you understand that any particle of or in fluid, air is considered as fluid when in action. So any particle in fluid has its regular path of motion. So it tries to regain its path of motion even if it hits an obstacle. So for the flowing wind, the first obstacle is your project, is your building, is your facade. So let's understand it with the help of a 3D model. So if at all we say that that's the building, having a typical podium as well as the tower area. So what happens is the wind comes from any of this 360 degree directions. But as we have already discussed, wind in action is considered as fluid and any particle in fluid tries to regain, suppose this is the particle in fluid. So any particle in fluid tries to regain its path of motion after the after hitting the obstruction. So what happens is this particle goes and hits the elevation, revolves around and leaves. Hits, revolves, leaves. Similarly, not necessarily it will follow the right hand side only. It can go from the left also. Similarly, not necessary, it will go from the left and right directions. It may also topple upon and try attaining its this path of motion. So in that due course, what happens is in onto this elevation, you see there is a sag of glass. So this sag is considered as positive wind load. Whereas what happens is when it goes through these elevations, so when it goes through this elevation, it tries to lift and drag all the panels onto this, this elevation. So there is a lift and drag at the corner panels. So when we design corner panels, there are much more concerns which these corner panels have. Either ways, always the negative wind load is greater than the positive wind load. It is a misconception that there is there are people inside the building or the HVAC or the air conditioning because of which there is negative wind load. There is nothing called negative wind load that can be exerted from within the building. So anything and everything as wind load is always from the external periphery. Okay. So coming back, even if a layman wants to understand what is positive and what is negative wind load, so it can be explained with the help of a very beautiful example of a fast moving train and you standing on the platform. 
suppose you are standing on a platform and a rajdhani passes by so don't you feel a drag towards it do you see those bits and pieces of papers going along with the train so going along with that train is negative you know when you few must be driving bikes right so during monsoons or during long drives do you feel that you are driving at 60 70 80 whatever speed you comfortable with and suddenly a trailer passes by just next to you a trailer passes by don't you feel a drag towards it that drag is called negative view so the same drag is being faced by the panels in the corner conditions officers so if at all you see a panel going on cave with the hit we are with the pressure of wind wind pressure and it going concave it is termed as positive wind similarly if it goes concave or convex it would be negative wind so if at all there is a lift and drag phenomena for the panels whether it be acp panels whether it be windows sliding casement any so i i'll try uh, putting some videos uh, from some of the mishaps happening around the world so just to make you understand what is negative wind load so that entire thing of negative wind load is exactly in your memory at the same time always remember at any given point of time since the wind flow is not unidirectional no one can predict that wind direction and which elevation of your building is under positive and which one is under negative and as per is code 875 at any given point of time 50% of your elevation 50% is under consistent negative wind load so that's all from my end for the wind load part and uh, the next we would be getting directly diving into the materials used for facades we will be making it in three parts so glass other materials part 1 other materials part 2 keep coming keep sharing keep subscribing once again thanks for watching